I have been using the POCO X3 Pro for the past 2 years. The phone was launched in 2021 and I have used it for the past 24 months. How is this budget phone released at under $300 lift up? It even got an honorable mention by the big tech YouTuber Mr. Who's the Boss. And also the POCO X3 Pro and the just announced POCO M4. I know, there's a lot of different names here, but these two are pretty special. Does it live up to the hype? Well, that's what we are about to find out. Welcome to this and listening video. In today's video, we will be reviewing the POCO X3 Pro. I got this phone in September 2021. I've been using it daily for two years, and how have it lived up? This budget phone released at around $250. I mean, how has it been? Let me just say that it's not worth the price. Something that not only me, but many other YouTubers say is that it does not fit the price. And so now, I've been handing this phone to person after person over the last few days, asking them to have a flick through the UI, and then guess how much this thing costs. I've had $399, $400, $450, even $500. Not a single person was close. I mean, $250, it's honestly way too cheap for this phone. It, it does not deserve to be $200, $250. It, it really feels like a $400 phone. Let's find out what's so good about this. Um, so let's start with the outside. So we can begin with seeing that it does have a headphone jack. I use the headphone jack daily to listen to podcasts when I'm in a train, listening to music. I mean, it's used daily. I'm also so sad that companies have got rid of the headphone jack. I mean, it's so useful. I'm just so sad and upset with Samsung, Apple, all of them just got rid of it. As I said before, this is a Poco phone. And if you haven't heard of this brand before, it's basically like a uh, sub brand. It's like a company that works under Xiaomi, which is a Chinese brand, and that's why if you search this phone in the US, you won't find it. But if you live in Europe or Asia, um, this phone could still be found and bought. This is the POCO X3 Pro, but there are also the POCO X4 Pro and X5 Pro. All of those still, still have the headphone jack. They aren't like the rest of the companies that just got rid of them. And I think it's so like contradicting, like big market pro, big flagships, they have no headphone jack, but Budget phones under $300, they do have I just think that's ironic. Also, this phone has a uh, charges with USB-C. And then to the left of the USB-C, we have speakers. I think that these speakers are pretty good. I mean, of course, it's better with a headphone, but I watch YouTube videos with these speakers and it's perfectly good for me. And uh, this dot down here, that's uh, a microphone. We also have a microphone on this side. Since there are two microphones uh, on each side, it can uh, record stereo sounds, which actually sounds very well with headphones. And here we also have another speaker. So yeah, on the upper part, we can see that there's a microphone there, and that is actually an IR sensor, infrared sensor, which uh, can be used to, for example, control your TV. It could be your TV remote. You can see there the uh, infrared sensor. Uh, I can see this with my own eyes, but you can see it through camera. And uh, it's it's the this is the remote app I use to like control my TV. I don't really watch that TV that often, but I mean it's a fun gimmick. And you might be asking yourself, um, what is this? Is it is that like tape or something? And yes, that is tape. Then you might be asking, why have you put tape there? So the reason I put tape here um, is because I actually um, put razor through my speakers. I, I mean the work, but like the filter uh, for for the speakers which are placed up here. Uh, let me open it and show it to you. You can see here that uh, there was supposed to be like a filter here for the speaker so like no water or anything could enter but I removed that because <laughs> I thought that it was possible to like just scratch it and it wouldn't go off but uh, it did go off and uh, now <laughs> there's a hole there so if any water or anything enters uh, this will lead to the screen actually. If I turn on the phone you can see you can see the screen there. Now I think we should move on to the sides. Here is the power button and um, it also doubles as a fingerprint scanner. So you can just hold your phone at just at a normal position and you can just fingerprint scan your, your phone and it will just unlock automatically. And it's so convenient to have this be the case. M most phones, if they have a fingerprint scanner, you have to go down here, but I mean, then you have to go, go up here. Also, when you, when you pick, uh, pick up your phone from your pocket, you just automatically have your uh, th thumb there and just pull it up and uh, it automatically un unlocks. So I think that's a very, very good feature. It's not a gimmick or anything. It also doubles down. You can also use it to log into your bank accounts and stuff like that. The only problem I have with it is that if your uh, finger is slightly wet, it, it won't be able to unlock. Like if you're sweaty or have come just uh, from the shower, you have to like really dry it to then be able to use it. Let's dive back in and look at the volume buttons. Very clicky. 
Uh, I know phones that have their volume buttons to the left side, but that's no good. I, I really don't like that and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why very soon. But what we do have on the left side is a, a SIM card. And this is also something that is just like the headphone jack. Most phones don't have this. So um, if we just take out the SIM card, uh, just like that, um, we can see here that it's it, it, it's pretty long. I mean, what's up with that? You can hold two SIM cards. Most people won't be using two SIM cards, but um, it, that's possible. This slot is used only for a SIM card, but this also, not only does it work for a SIM card, but it also works for a micro SD card. You can just put any micro SD card in here and you could start storing any video or footage from your phone into it. I mean, the, the Poco X3 Pro already have 128 gigabytes of storage, which is more than enough for me. And again, just like the headphone jack, it's so, so contradicting that this budget phone which is priced much less than those Samsungs and iPhones and Pixels and they don't even have expandable sort of storage. But something else that's very very neat with this is that you can take space from your storage and place it as your uh, RAM. So if you go into settings and then go to, go to storage, if you go to system files you can go here memory extension and you can just add to your RAM. This is currently off but you can add 2 gigs, 3 gigs or even 5 gigs and add it to your RAM. This one has 6 gigs of RAM and it can add up to 5 gigs which is a total of 11 gigs. This phone actually performs very well. So yeah, we all, we all took a sneak peek into the software but I think that's it for what's outside this phone. Now let's put our focus into the cameras. So this is the main camera and it can shoot up to 48 megapixels. Here we have uh, the macro camera which sucks i think it's like two megapixels and here we also have the uh, ultra wide uh, which is a 0.6x that's better than the macro camera but uh, i i wouldn't use the ultra wide and i think that's the like the depth sensor and then we also have the flash and uh, speaking of the torch something that is very neat with this phone that i think should be a standard of all phones is that so if you double press the power button and um, it just turns on so if you double press it and uh, you can see that the torch uh, turns on and then if you press it uh, again it just turns off there are multiple of these gestures, we will look at them very soon. And perhaps something we also should look at is the screen. You can see here very detailedly that there are multiple scratches. This phone uh, very, very generously came with a uh, plastic cover. When I first bought this phone, I, I wasn't sure if it did come with a plastic cover or not. So what I did was that I bought actually uh, three pairs of screen covers. <laughs> Two years has passed, as I said, and uh, that hasn't been necessary. They have just like literally been locked away for two years, not been used at all. You can see here all the scratches, and actually most of these scratches, they aren't really visible if you turn the screen on. It's like really if you focus on it when it's black that you like start to see them. So I don't think I will be replacing the screen anytime soon. We'll see for how much longer are we using this phone. One, one last thing before we go to the hardware uh, is to show off what came with the box actually. So I, I actually still have the box with me so, and here it is. Um, it's a very nice um, sleek box, nothing really that fancy. And if we open it, I mean I, I haven't touched this since I first got it. I got a few stickers, I mean just say here everything you need, nothing you don't. That's a pretty good uh, sticker actually, I, I might actually use it. And yeah, there's a very long manual here, stupid. But um, yeah, th th this is empty, but, but when this phone also came, surprisingly, I was actually very surprised that this came, it actually came a, a pair of wired headphones. And these headphones were uh, very good, I really liked them. And something else that came in with the box that uh, Xiaomi is very famous for, it's their charger. So this giant brick came in with the phone and charges at 333 watts. If you don't know what that means is that, uh, well, it's pretty fast. It's faster than most phones actually. Usually it just takes uh, an hour or just a couple of minutes more to charge my phone from 0 to 100. I was testing charging this today. There will be a number here for how long it took from 0 to 50 and 0 to 100. But of course it depends on how long you have had this phone. I mean, I have this for two years and also the temperature. And honestly, if I'm going to be honest, this uh, charging brick, which is amazing, I would actually not recommend this. I'm, uh, I mean, I would recommend this because of how fast it is, but me personally, I, I, I charge my phone over the night and I don't need it to be fast. I understand that it's good to have a fast charger in, in case like, if you forgot to charge it over the night and uh, you have an hour or less to charge your phone and quickly need to have it done for work or school. But if you're going to use your phone for a long period of time like me and you charge your phone over the night, I don't recommend using this uh, charger actually. When I first had this phone, I wouldn't charge it for like 
two or three days, but now uh, it only survives one, one and a half day or so, perhaps even less than uh, one day. But for me right now, I think, I think that this is still very good. And another thing that came with the box is actually a case. There was like a phone case that came in um, with the box, uh, which is this case. Now, for those of you that have this phone, you might ask yourself, but the block, this is not the case I got with my phone. And indeed, that's true because uh, you can see here that I have actually colored my phone. Um, it's with oil painting. It sticks uh, actually very well with plastic. Uh, so I painted the whole inside. When it came with the box, uh, it was like clear, like just clear plastic. Uh, you can see like places like there, the, like the, so some of the paint have gone off, but the rest of the paint, is still here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure when I painted it, painted this. I think I think it's been a year. The paint has held up very well. You can still see like the uh, like brush marks and everything. But if you would uh, slap it on to your uh, to the phone, so yeah, you you like barely see anything. And the clear case it was like very ugly. I mean like the Poco logo that is here, like it was visible. You'll also see like some other information there. So definitely, if you have like a clear case and that came with your phone that you like didn't ask for, just paint it. And uh, although uh, this case exists, uh, I'm not a big fan of this, uh, these types of cases because I have cards, I have like a debit card, a library card and stuff like that. And so I actually got like a wallet style uh, phone case, uh, which uh, I, and this, this one I, I like a lot. And this is very good, magnetic, um, the phone, the camera is still there, all the ports are accessible. And uh, yeah, there's a slot in here, three slots in here. And if, if you remember me mentioning that, like, it's good that the volume uh, buttons aren't to the left side. Uh, I, I know phones that have their volume buttons to the left side, but that's no good. I, I really don't like that. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why very soon. Well, it's because when uh, the, the phone is closed like this, all of the buttons are here, accessible. But, like, if the volume buttons would be here, I mean, like, that would be, like, pretty difficult to, like, know which ones is where. But here, I, I can, like, feel it. Like, we have a plus and a minus. I mean, it's very good. And also something that I really like with these kind of cases is that, well, you could ha have them stand up in different positions. But if you like these style of cases more, um, go for it. Uh, I, I use a mix of both, actually. Like, when I'm filming stuff, I don't want, like, this to be, like, hanging here and then, like, coming over the camera. So uh, I use this one often when filming, stuff like that. But I, uh, but I keep both of them. And now I think it's a good time to go into the software. So let's do that now. If we go back to settings here into about my phone, we can see that this phone is a MIUI version 14. When this phone first was released, it was at uh, the 12th version. That was March uh, 2021. And I bought this phone uh, in September 2021. And that, then it was 12.5. And uh, two years later, it's at uh, MIUI version 14, which I guess is two uh, yearly updates later. So it seems to be up to date. And also something that I really like with this phone uh, are, are the button shortcuts. You can make like long pressing the home button, which is the middle one, you can like launch Google Assistant. And then the menu bar could take you like a partial screenshot, uh, which is a very neat. Uh, or, or the this button, I made this so like it takes a full screenshot. And uh, as I showed before, like the double pressing it uh, opens up the uh, torch. And then you can, you can also have like the power button plus like one of these buttons do something, but uh, I've chosen that to be none. And like Android in general, like there's a lot of customization, like your, how your control center should be like, from which apps and stuff, all, all of that is here. You can also have stuff like app lock, which like will require like a, a passport for like certain apps, like an extra layer of security for like bank uh, apps or like social media account apps. And something really sweet that I haven't seen uh, other phones have is a radio. This phone literally has a radio. It's like, it's like an FM radio. But something to bear in mind is that uh, you do need uh, to have headphones uh, inserted uh, to use this app, otherwise uh, it won't work. But then when it's on, uh, you can start scanning all your local um, radio stations and we just like list all of them. And this doesn't require any um, Wi-Fi or internet, uh, as you can see, uh, airplane mode, no Wi-Fi, nothing, nothing, the location is on, but it, it, it's, it's scanning. I don't know if uh, all phones have them, but like this is a, there's like a built-in compass app, which I guess it's, uh, I don't know how accurate this is, um, but it works. There's also like a level uh, thingy, <laughs> so you can see how level stuff are. It also works uh, in this direction. And another neat thing that uh, I don't know if other phones have or not is the second space. You can have two people using this, the same phone, or like you, one page could be your personal account and one be your work account, so 
you can have two separate, it's, it's basically like two separate phones. All of the apps that are uh, in my official account aren't here. The native um, Xiaomi apps like App Vault, Themes, they're all here. Now I think we should uh, see the most important part of the phone according to me, which is the camera. And the camera of this phone is actually very um, interesting. As I said before, there there's a 48 megapixel uh, version, but something that I don't like about this is that it's locked in the aspect ratio of 4x3. Most people like this aspect ratio, but I prefer to have my phone uh, be on 16x9 because videos like this, similar to this one, they are filmed at 16x9. So uh, I like to have uh, my video and uh, photo aspect ratio consistent. You, you can change between uh, 1x1, 3x4, 9x16 and full, which is, uh, uh, well, well, it's the full screen then. And other settings you have here is that like, a timer, you can have 3 seconds, 5 seconds, 10 seconds. You have the grid lines, which I always have on here. But you can also turn it on and off. Oh, oh, wow, this is interesting. You can, you, you can have them like... Oh, I didn't know this, like... You have them be like different shapes and stuff. I should have done this before. Oh, wow, you, there's like also like a snail thing. That's pretty cool. But I'll, I'll keep it centered, uh, center mark. That's pretty really good to have, straighten. Yeah, let, let's have all of this on, I mean, that's so good. And yeah, you can also have like time bursts, uh, which like, I want of pictures, and then like, you can choose to have them like every second or so. This is like a good thing if you're like, having a fa family photo, like take 10 pictures at, at once or something. You also have movie frames to make like, your shots more dramatic. There's also like HDR versions, auto or off, AI versions, like, I guess like, find faces and like tune them and of course you also have um, the torch here which uh, is useful we could also look at the selfie camera it also has a flash that uh, well when you take a picture it goes white and then takes a picture there are also multiple filters many interesting stuff but you could also do that post editing so uh, that's not something that i like to use but one filter that I actually like is the color focus, which um, I, I don't know if, if this is visible, but like, so yeah, it recognizes human faces, um, like, you know, like this sculpture, and they become colored as you see here, like their skin, clothes, and the, and it, the person's hat uh, is colored, while uh, everything in the background is black and white. It's actually one, one of very few filters that uh, I think is pretty impressive, especially for a budget phone like this. But my favorite camera feature is uh, when you scroll up here and go to the Pro version. And here when you have the Pro, I mean, it's black right now, but you, you have so many settings here. You can change the ISO between 50 and 6400. You can change the sh shutter from uh, 1 in 4000 to 30. Honestly, I really don't know what these numbers mean. You can change the focus also, uh, that I actually know. There's also settings for white balances, you can, you can change it to 2000, 8000. If you ever had a camera, it's basically like a manual mode where all the color balance and the shutter speed and those things are in your hands, you're in control. And to the left, there's also a couple of interesting stuff. So if we look here, we have focus peaking, which marks uh, those, those parts of your photo or video which are in focus in red, so you know with what parts of your picture are in focus. Apparently, you can also shoot in RAW, which uh, I actually didn't know. I, I don't know how that, how good that is, but uh, if you don't know what RAW is, it's basically a massive amount of information, like the color balance, all of those stuff. We also have uh, exposure ver verification, which is similar to the focus peaking, but for uh, the w white and black levels of uh, how, how much the exposure is. And it's actually the same in video. Oh, or actually, and there's no RAW format uh, for video. There's a log format instead. But uh, other than that, the movie frame, focus peaking, exposure verification, they're all here in video mode as well. And as if you might have seen, uh, you can shoot at 720p at 30 FPS, which why would you? And uh, you can also go to 1080p at 30 FPS or, or 60 FPS, that works as well, as well as 4K at 30 FPS. I prefer to shoot at 1080p at 30 FPS as well, 4K is just too much storage and 60 FPS is uh, just too smooth for me. But there's even more camera stuff here. I mean, I'm, I'm a camera nerd. All of this is very important for me. Perhaps it's as important for you. So we have panorama mode, which shoots not the 360 degrees uh, picture, but it's it's more like a 270 degrees. You can shoot a landscape with it. I have a few examples. We have night mode, uh, which um, exists, but I rarely use night mode. I don't even think I have any examples of it. And then we have the classic portrait mode, and then here you can choose um, the F value, uh, which um, makes the, the background less, more or less blurry. You have already seen photos and videos, and uh, here we have a dual video. And that is super interesting, because you can both film your selfie camera and your front-facing camera. And uh, you can also change the size. You, you could have either one be uh, the, the bigger one. 
and then we have slow motion which also <laughs> I use a lot so here we're going to choose either 720p or 1080p which of course 1080p and then you can choose uh, the, the frame rate either 120 fps 240 fps or 960 fps and the higher the fps the slower it seems and time lapse is is perhaps the video mode that i use the most i make multiple time lapses and we have settings for just just like in pro mode uh, the white balance, the focus, the shutter speed, ISO, um, EV, whatever that means. Not only do you have those settings, but you also have, uh, you can cho choose how fast it goes. We have up to uh, 1800 times uh, faster. Uh, the duration can also be chosen. The maximum is uh, 240 minutes or 4 hours. But you can also go infinite, but then you have to be in control. Those are the settings for camera. This is not only based on Poco X3 Pro, but this is like all Xiaomi's phones, I think, have these settings. And I, I actually think that these, this is very useful, especially like, as I said, the um, like stuff like dual video, slow motion, or time lapse. I use them a lot. And now when we have seen every single mode of the camera, why not also uh, look at uh, the uh, different lenses? So we have a 0 0.6 at times lens and uh, honestly uh, I will show you some footage I, I, I'm not really a big fan of it then we have a 2x here 2x is not optical so it's just cropping and for video it can crop up to it says here six times but uh, for photos it can crop up to 10x uh, which like uh, I, I don't think you would want any more than that 10x is already very grainy and as you see like, it's a bad quality and then if you go here there's also a macro mode you see here. That's not something we have touched on, but that's neither something you want to touch on because, well, the quality is very bad. I will show you some pictures. It's not good. The macro is only there to like make it look symmetric and better and like good looking. Oh, we have a macro camera, but what does that mean? And like it, the, the macro camera is just trash. You can also like see by its size. The only like good size is the main camera. Other than that, the, the rest of the cameras are just not good. And I think this summarizes the whole phone. And let me know, do you think that this phone is worth it? Like, do you think that a $300 phone is worth it or not? Uh, like, is it worth those cameras? And personally, I think that this is a very good phone. Uh, as I said, I've used this for two years. And honestly, I, I think I will be using it for another two years or so. All the videos I've been shooting, except for this one, is with this phone, uh, actually. Watch my previous and also perhaps future videos. If you enjoyed this video, I, I, I'm pretty sure that you will like my last video, which was about me making a foldable phone using Legos. But before you do that, just like and don't subscribe, okay? Don't subscribe this, uh, to this video, but just like it, okay? That's all I'm asking for. Just like it, and then go and watch this video. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you listen to me another time. Goodbye.